¿Qué onda, plebes? My name is Mario Navarro. Today we're discussing my first clinical rotation experience. If you find this video interesting, make sure you like and subscribe, and here we go. Interventional radiology. I don't know what you're doing now. So, if you haven't guessed by now, my first clinical rotation was in emergency medicine. So, if you know about my background, you know that I uh, worked in emergency medicine. So, I did about a year working on the ambulance, doing 911 transports. Uh, responding to essentially everything from you know regular house calls to traumas to car accidents all that thing and as well as doing critical care transports working alongside nurses respiratory therapists and just other paramedics and EMTs and so it was a really really good experience to have from working on ambulance I then moved on and went into the emergency department working as a tech and so I did that for about a year at Loma Linda and that was also an eye-opening experience and I started working at the height of COVID and had the opportunity to essentially be part of, of a trauma team. And this is the initial team that uh, when you arrive to the ED as a trauma activation, we're you know, responsible for getting the patient, you know, naked from head to toe, doing a primary and secondary survey and stabilizing the patient and for them to be sent, you know, to the operating room if that's what they need or, you know, just to stabilize them so that they, they live. Having that experience really was helpful for this rotation. So now let's kind of backtrack to the day before my first uh, rotation. I kind of want to discuss the things that I did to prepare and how I was feeling. And so here's a little bit of footage of that. Today is the Monday before I start my first rotation, my rotation in emergency medicine. And I just kind of wanted to document how I'm feeling. I'm pretty nervous. Um, not nervous because I feel like I don't know information, but nervous and the fact I've just been reflecting the entire day, like all the, the work and effort that it's taken to get to this point and just feeling the weight of the privilege and opportunity, right? To be able to care for people and, and the privilege and opportunity to be a Latino male in medicine. And yeah, so it's, it's kind of feeling heavy. Um, and so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Now for the things that I did to prepare, so I did five general things um, to prepare for this rotation. First, it was hitting up PAs and people that I know on Instagram who are working in this field and asking them for advice or for resources that they recommended. And so uh, some of the things that I'll be mentioning today are from you know these, these uh, practicing providers who, who helped me in that way. Second, I kind of went on Google and searched up the common complaints that you see in the emergency department. And then I used this little book that I, We'll show in a little bit called the EMRA, Emergency Medicine Fundamentals. I went in this and this little book has a lot of good pearls to consider for different chief complaints that you'll commonly encounter in the emergency department. And But one of the things that I really liked about this is that it had a can't miss diagnosis for things like chest pain, abdominal pain, your common complaints that you see in the emergency department. So what I did is that I essentially wrote down these complaints and wrote them on my little H&P notebook. The third thing that I did was I Googled and I'll attach in the link down below kind of the common labs that you encounter. And I already had an idea of this from working in the emergency department, but really acquainting myself with the top 10 labs that you're going to order and what each of those tests, when do you get them, when it's indicated to order them and uh, what you're looking for, if they come back positive or negative. It was also super helpful because that was also a question that I commonly got from my preceptors it was like, okay, what do you want to order and why? If it's positive, what is how is that going to change your management plan? And so I'll kind of show up on the screen. You'll see some of those common labs include a, a CBC, a BMP, a magnesium, a phosphate level, your LFTs and amylase lipase, and cardiac pulm tests that you would order for like a chest painter, a troponin, a BNP, a D-dimer, and then other common tests include a lactate, coag studies, arterial blood glass, a beta-HCG, which is just a fancy word for a pregnancy test, a UA, a urine analysis, a urine tox screen, 
and a fecal occult blood test, which is just a, a fancy word for a test looking for in blood in feces that's not grossly apparent. So yeah, being familiarized with these tests, again, is going to set you apart from, from students who, you know, just haven't prepared and are showing up there day one, not knowing, you know, what to order or what the common labs and imaging is. And lastly, the fifth thing that I did was um, I honed in on my emergency medicine presentation. And so there's an article that I also have attached down below called the three minute ED presentation. This article is kind of old. It was written like 10 years ago. Essentially they dive into a really solid approach to presenting your case in an emergency department. So I, as a PA student, after seeing a patient, you're expected to present, you know, what this patient is uh, showing up with. And so you have to do it in a very succinct and quick manner, because again, the ED, it's very fast paced compared to like a family medicine or internal medicine um, specialty. The next thing that I want to discuss is my everyday carry. What are the things that I carry in my backpack that I, you know, recommend that you should probably have too if you're going into the emergency department. Here's my actual backpack here. I bought this on eBay. It's pretty cool. This is the way I have my uh, stethoscope. Here's my badge. And then in this front pocket, I have a couple things. I have a reflex hammer, which I actually never used. Trauma shears, uh, yeah, I would carry these in my pocket because these are really helpful. These are uh, X shears. I have tuning fork, which I never used. This is more like neuro stuff, hearing problems. And we never use that. What else we got in here? Up in the front, we have a couple pens, a pen light, this is always Super clutch to do your quick neuro exam, some highlighters, and two pens. Let's see what else we got in here. This front pouch, I have all of my pocket guides. So I have this Maxwell um, quick medical reference guide, super clutch. It has like the mental status exam and some kind of other exams that you would want to use on the fly. This is actually free if you join the AAPA, so go check that out. And a uh, Snellen chart for your eye stuff. And then we have these two. This one is an antibiotic guide for the emergency department. Um, they have an app that's like 10 bucks. I, I didn't know about it until I asked uh, one of my attendings. They said the app is, you know, better because it stays current uh, data. But this was the most recent version. It was pretty helpful. And then this book is also pretty awesome, EM Fundamentals. And it's just super, super helpful. It has um, a lot of like common diagnoses and it's arranged by chief complaint. So if you go to here, you can see um, shortness of breath, dermatologic emergencies and they have like pictures in there and things that you want to consider when you're treating for those specific complaints. I have my handy dandy iPad, also super necessary and um, not so much to document on this thing, but to search things up and um, because sometimes the computers can be very, very slow. Oh, and my super handy dandy medical basics hnp notebook this thing is super clutch uh it's essentially what it sounds like a history and physical notebook to keep track of all of your things this is what a kind of blank sheet looks like you can put your name the differential diagnosis and you know things that you're jotting down kind of tiny but super helpful with the ros so that you know you don't forget anything this is essentially the, the, the questions that you're checking off you know when you're asking like have you had any you know things like your heart racing any um chest pain stuff like that and then it also gives you like a normal to keep track of your um, physical exam. You can write your physical exam findings there and then like what you would normally say, you know, for like a cardiovascular exam. And so that's this and I think that is it. Is that it? So now I want to discuss a typical day in the ED. So typically I would wake up sometimes around 7, 7.30. Um, and this was on a Saturday where I had to go in at 10 a.m. And so my shifts were 10 hour shifts from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And so I would wake up around that time, kind of, you know, get ready, get dressed. This rotation was really nice because it was about two to three minutes away from my apartment. And so I would typically leave about 10 minutes before my start time. I would, you know, pull up into the ED. What you see here is me uh, walking into the emergency department and, you know, walking down this hall. And typically what I would do first is go straight to what we call the provider room. And so this is what it looks like. It's essentially a room where all the providers, the attendings and students hang out where we do all of our documentation and kind of it's the hub for the medical decision making for the emergency department. I would get there, find a workstation where I would be, wipe that down, log in and get ready. And then I would go and introduce myself to whatever attending I was working with that day. From there, I would go and check the main board. And this is essentially a big TV that kind of just shows you 
all of the rooms and the patients that are in there and also what doctors and nurses are assigned to it. And so I would kind of get a macroscopic view of how loaded the emergency department was. And then from there, I would start seeing patients. My responsibilities included first, if the patient uh, was stable enough, I would go into the room, see the patient on my own, get a history and focus physical on the chief complaint. Do you smoke? No. You sure? No. You're not sure? I mean, I occasionally have like a cigarette or, or like a joint or crack. It's a yes or no question, Diego. Okay, yes. And then come back, report that information um, to my attending, as well as the additional labs that I would like to order and, and my differential diagnosis of like the things that I think are going on for this patient and the plan, whether they need Zofran for their nausea or if they need, you know, some certain medication for their pain and then their disposition, whether they're going to be, if I think they're going to be admitted or if I think this patient um, after being treated will be able to be uh, discharged with follow-up to their primary care provider. I would typically see about on my own, of course, under the supervision of a physician, I'm about four to five patients in a 10 hour shift. And then I would be responsible for also writing a full note for this uh, patient. And so that's what you see me doing here. I'm kind of typing up my note. Overall, this rotation was a, a very positive experience. I feel like I learned a lot. I developed a lot more confidence in my abilities to go into a room and kind of get a differential diagnosis going and kind of figure out what's going on and then and, and work it up. So the last thing I want to talk about is my emergency medicine end of rotation exam. So these are exams that we have to take after core rotations like emergency medicine, family medicine, general surgery. And these are 120 question exam that's administered by the PAEA, which is an edu education like accredited body for um, PA programs. And so I got to take this exam and uh, I, I found out yesterday that I passed. So that was really good. The ways that I primarily studied for this exam was essentially doing my Anki cards up until a week before the exam. And then that week right before I was doing 50 question practice exams from Roche Review. I did all of those questions. I think in total, I ended up doing 250 plus 120 and close to 400 practice multiple choice questions before this exam. I, I passed, so I, I highly recommend uh, using Rosh Review. I think that was the, the biggest key to my success. So yeah, guys, that's it. That was my emergency medicine rotation. Starting next week, I will be at the UC Davis cancer center and so i will be on an oncology service both inpatient and outpatient that just means inside the hospital and then outside in like a clinic yeah i hope to do a video about that in the near future if you like this video